Hey guys, my name's Chad Knapper and I spent 20 years with Charleston PD, mainly doing drug work in the drug unit, the street crimes unit, DEA. I love my job. I like kicking in doors. I like fighting. I like getting dope. I like getting guns. I just had a ball for 20 years and I didn't want to tell my chief, but I'm like, wow, you pay me to do this. But what I didn't like about my job was as we were serving search warrants and you would have dad in the house selling drugs, mom in the house maybe using drugs, and you'd have the babies in the house and the children. I didn't like that part of the job. I don't like the young people I see every day destroying their lives because of drug abuse. I don't like that part of the job. West Virginia leads the nation in the drug overdose death rate. We're more than double the national average according to CDC in their 2019 statistics. Along with the drug epidemic comes a lot of problems for West Virginia. Jobs, HIV, hepatitis, foster system blowing up, grandparents raising grandkids. So we have a lot of issues and a lot more that I'm not even mentioning. So as a police officer, when you get to be involved with something that truly makes a difference in people's lives, it's very memorable. And for me, that was the Handle With Care program. The Handle With Care program started right here in West Virginia. And it's all about helping traumatized children learn each and every day to the best of their ability. You know, we have mandated reporting laws for abuse and neglect for children. But what about all the other kids? All those are in the homes that don't meet the mandated reporting laws. What do we do with all those kids? That's where Handle With Care can come in. Now, an old drug cop, you say, how did you get involved with Handle With Care program? 2013, I'm running the Metro Drug Unit, the largest drug unit in West Virginia where I spent the majority of my career. I get promoted to Bureau Chief of Investigative Services. I skipped three captain's tests because I just didn't want to leave running the drug unit, but eventually it caught up with me. And the chief also gave me the dual role at the time of being the Bureau Chief. So I was running the street crimes unit, CID, and also our drug unit from an administrative capacity. And I was also over our patrol division, which is our largest division in the police department for a short period of time. It was during this time that Booth Goodwin was a U.S. attorney in the Southern District of West Virginia. And him, along with Andrea Dar at the West Virginia Children's Justice Task Force and her committee, got together and they wanted to see what we could do about all the kids that are exposed to crime and violence in our communities. And out of that committee, was born the Handle With Care program. The Handle With Care program for the police department in 2013, we were chose as the pilot police department. And Mary C. Snow on the west side of Charleston was chose as a school, and various other agencies were also chosen to participate in the program. And my chief said, you're gonna be over it. So that's how I got involved. I just first heard of it and said, you're gonna be over it for the police department. There's three key components to the program. First and foremost is law enforcement. Second is helping your schools be trauma sensitive. And third is your mental health services. The police department, it's not hard on police. And really, when you look at a program, you can't add a lot of things to what they're already doing. They are very busy, but when police see how important it is and it affects children, they get behind it. Let me give you an example. Police respond at three o'clock in the morning to a domestic. Dad's beat up mom, dad goes to jail, mom goes to the hospital. Little Johnny's there. The police record that child's name, age, address, and school. Before he attends school the next day, they send a confidential fax, text, email to the school and let them know to handle little Johnny with care. That's it. They don't give him any details. If you gave them details, there would be no program. We would be violating laws, policies, procedures. You all understand that. So all we give them is handle with care. But I'm telling you, that's enough. When you as a teacher find out that something's happened to that student, you are prone to be empathetic instead of punitive for, for discipline. So that's what we do. We let them be proactive instead of reactive. And like I said, this is not hard on police. A couple key aspects for police that you have to consider. One is within a police department, you have sheriffs, you have colonels with the state police, you have your chiefs of police that are appointed by mayors, your sheriffs run every four to eight years in West Virginia, and then your colonels, whenever a new governor comes in, there's turnover. The key part is keeping up with that turnover because you have to have the buy-in of the top guys. 
because it needs to come from the top down and they show how important it is to their guys. They want it done and the program is easily implemented when you have the top buy-in. The next part that I see is really important with police departments. The leaders have to put passionate people over the program. Within a police department, you can train guys to buy drugs, you can train guys to kick in doors, you can train guys to do DUIs, but can you really train passion? Either they have it or they don't. And man, if you can put a passionate person that likes to help kids over the program, they're going to make sure it's successful. So that's two of the big key parts with police departments. The second part is the schools. It's really not rocket science. Let me give you an illustration. Little Johnny went to school and he didn't have his homework. He was misbehaving. Miss Williams grabs him by the wrist. She's taking him down to the principal's office. On the way to the principal's office, little Johnny looks up at Miss Williams and says, Miss Williams, I know I should have my homework. Daddy beat up Mommy last night. They took Daddy jail. They took Mommy to the hospital. He said, I know that's no excuse. I went upstairs to get Sissy to help me do my homework, and Sissy had cut her wrist. That was a real-life example we got in Canal County while we were doing training. What do you do as a teacher in that situation? You don't need training, right? You take little Johnny back to the classroom. You love on him. If he's sleepy, you let him sleep. If he's hungry, you give him food. You don't worry about the test. Have somebody help him with his homework. You basically show him you care. Now let's say little Johnny mans up. He doesn't say anything. Some of these kids live in this each and every day, and they're hardened by it. He goes to the principal's office. The principal disciplines him. What does little Johnny say? Why try? Who even cares? And when he gives up, guys, all of our resources deal with him because he turns to a lot of time destructive things like alcohol, drugs, delinquency, crime. That's where Handle with Care can come in. But he doesn't matter if he says anything or not, that notice goes to the school and the teacher can already be proactive. And then the last part is the mental health services. What we found in the pilot program was 90% of the kids only needed the help of the teachers and the school staff. 10% needed specialized therapy. So part of the program has the schools provide office space to the therapists. Why is that important? A lot of these kids are raised in homes to where the parents either can't or are just not going to get them to the therapy. So you have the therapist right there at the school. You take care of that problem. Not only that, but the therapist now can work with the kids and the teachers. You can't provide information specifically on the incident, but say the teacher's working with little Johnny on leadership. The counselor can go to the teacher and say, hey, if you see him exhibiting good leadership skills, please give him an attaboy. If he is leading the kids down the hallway and he's the line leader for the day, and he's keeping them on the right side, tell him he's the best line leader there. Give him a pat on the back, just encouraging. An encouraging word can go a long way to these kids. So it allows them to work with the school staff. It's a win-win. To sum up the program, I want to tell you from a parent's point of view. We had a parent that told us, I'm just so thankful for the Handle with Care program. My son was at his father's house. They were separated. They were divorced. And there was a domestic incident with the stepmother. I didn't know anything about it. The next day he went to school. A police had came and done a handle with care notice and sent it to the school. And the school provided services. As a mom, how important is that when your child's suffering? She was just so thankful somebody was there to provide resources to her child. She found out later, and of course she did those things, but she didn't find out till later. That's how simple the program is, guys. It doesn't take a lot of money. It takes people working together to make sure these kids are successful. This program is being replicated across the nation. You can go right now on the internet and see Handle with Care Florida, Handle with Care New Jersey, Handle with Care Maryland, Handle with Care Delaware. It's being replicated in New York, California, Massachusetts, and it started right here in Little West Virginia. And it's all about helping kids get through the day, the week, the month, the year so they can graduate because we know if kids can graduate if they can be successful in school they can be successful in life and we also know that these kids are going to be our future 
One caring adult can make a huge impact in a child's life. And I want to leave you with, I want to challenge you. Be that adult. Encourage a child. Lift them up because you don't have anything to lose. Invest in them as much as you can because they are our future. Thank you, guys.